In our last video, we discussed in detail why Ibrahim Badamusi Bawangida overthrew General Muhammadu Buhari in a palace school of August 27, 1985. Today, we will take it a step further and discuss how the palace school was executed in a systematically brilliant manner. We will also contradict the claim that the coup was bloodless. Hello, 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 his plus. Welcome back to another video. Gabriel here. Remember to smash the like button on this video and leave a comment below. Without much ado, let's get started. In the hours leading up to the Hedge Hour, key officers gathered in the Armored Headquarters Battalion Officers' Mess. To foster bonding, drinks and food were freely offered. The main hall of the Bonnie Camp Visiting Officers' Guest House on Victoria Island in Lagos served as a coordinating center or war room for cool action on DD. The 6th Guard Battalion, backed by Ray's troop, was placed on standby at the camp to provide security for the coup planners. Key fighting units in the Federal Capital Area at that time belonged to the Brigade of Guards and Army Headquarters Formation. Although the 9th Mechanized Brigade, based at Ikeja, was as has been the case in the past close enough to be a factor. Fighting battalions at Owode, Ibadan, Okitipupa, Benin, Akure, Ilorin and other distant locations posed a threat if they came under the command of hostile officers. As a result, the whole command of the 2nd Mechanized Division in Ibadan, as well as its fighting brigades such as the 4th and the 9th Brigade, were critical. Abacha, Shagaya and Inyega were on board. Brigadier Sani Abacha and most of his staff officers from the divisional headquarters in Ibadan arrived in Lagos in a high-speed motor convoy shortly after midnight on the 27th and were the last vehicles allowed to pass through the toll gates that night except for one latecomer. The guards brigade in Lagos under Lieutenant Colonel Sabo Aliu consisted of the guards garrison at Obalinde under Captain Maitama, the 6th guard battalion in Bonin Camp under Lieutenant Colonel Joshua Madaki and the 123rd Guards Battalion at Ikeja under Major John Y. Madaki and the 93rd Guard Battalion at Ojo. From a military standpoint, the coup was basically a cut-off and killed routine. One of the first acts of the operation, therefore, would be the closure of the toll gates along Lagos Ibadan Expressway to cut the federal capital off along that axis. Seizure of the domestic, international and military wing of the Moritala Mohamed Airport was essential to prevent the Air Force from being able to deploy the C-130 tactical transport for loyal troops, in addition to cutting of internal and external civil flights. In any case, the Chief of Air Staff at that time, Air Vice Marshal Ibrahim Alpha, wasn't hostile to the coup, although the same could not be said for some of his air officers commanding. This concern motivated the 202 Armored Battalion in Kaduna under UK Bello, for example, to deploy the armored vehicles and park them in a blocking configuration right on the runway at the Air Force Base in Kaduna. The National Police Headquarters at Kansalim at Molini Street and the Lagos State Police Command Headquarters at Odudua Street, Ikeja GRUA, were required to be secured to prevent the police from being used as a proxy mechanism for assembling loyal forces. The radio station, of course, was a prime target. On that particular day, the duty officer Odoba was from the guard's garrison, whose superior officer, Maitama, was on board. As a result, seizing the station would be simple. Lastly, Major General MC Ali retired said the palace school was received with press inspired fanfare. As Muslims prepared to go to the mosque for morning prayers on Salah Day, in the Ikeja cantonment on August 26, news reached tactical actors that the operation was a go, slated for that night. As the day continued, strong signs that something was going to happen began to emerge. The commander-in-chief, the commander brigade of guards and the ADC to the commander-in-chief all made attempts to learn more about the situation and prepare for the worst-case scenario. Lieutenant Colonel Sabo Aliu, a commander of the Guards Brigade, was said to have repeatedly asked his friend, cosmate and fellow Kanun native, Lieutenant Colonel Hej Akilu, Director of Military Intelligence, if the reports were true. 
Sabo Aliu was apparently informed by Akilu that the matter had been investigated and that he had nothing to worry about. Despite this, Major Jokulu, ADC to the Commander-in-Chief and Colonel Sabo Aliu, Commander Brigades of Guards, continued to shuttle or call between Ikoi, Victoria Island and Ikeja in search of intelligence and to check on the status of units unknown to them that they were being watched by military intelligence. They were detained at the gate by troops and subalterns from units under Major John Y. Madaki and Maxwell Kobe shortly after 9 p.m. while riding together in Jokolo's car on a trip to Ikeja Cantonment, uncomfortably near in time to the Hedge Hour. They were stripped and severely beaten. They were later taken and kept at the officers' quarters in Bonnie Camp, a makeshift transit detention point where thereafter they were joined by General Muhammad Buari, Ambassador Lawa Rafin Dadi, and General Tunde Idiagbo when they later returned to Nigeria from Mecca a few days later. Meanwhile, after failing to reach Brigadier Sani Abaja, who was the general officer commanding 2nd Division by phone or signal earlier in the day, Colonel Sabo Aliu dispatched Captain Maitama of the Guards Garrison on an errand to drive all the way to Ibadan. He was instructed to talk to Abache directly with a message from the Commander-in-Chief to clarify his position. With no documented contact with the GOC, the captain, who was already a part of the plot, returned to Lagos empty-handed. Similarly, after leaving Lagos for Mina, purportedly for Salah, the chief of army staff, Babangida, could not be reached by the commander-in-chief. Needless to say, his military assistant, Major Aminu, whom he had left in Lagos to assist with coordination and operations, was able to contact him, while the head of state was unable. By the nightfall, General Buari had realized the seriousness of the situation. His chief of staff, Supreme Headquarters, was in Saudi Arabia. His chief of army staff was in Mina and didn't return or answer calls. He could not even get through to the general officer commanding 2nd Division. The Brigade of Guards commander had vanished after being apprehended in Ikeja. He could not even contact his own ADC who had been arrested as well. He abruptly lost contact with the young garrison commander he had entrusted with delivering communications to Ibadan. Lieutenant Colonel Joshua Madaki, the commanding officer of the 6th Battalion at Boni Camp, nearby, was not on his side either. The National Security Organization lacked its own troops. General Bali, the chairman of the Joint Chiefs, had no army to command, even if he wanted to. General Maguru, the Minister of Internal Affairs, lacked his own internal affairs troops and had no intentions of using customs or prison officers against the army. Units from the 3rd Division in Jos, where General Muhammad Obuari last commanded before January 1984, were too far away. And as it turns out, later that evening, it will soon be without a general officer commanding. At this time, the die had been cast, and all that was left was for him to wait calmly at the state house in Dodan Barracks until daybreak when the curtains fell. He was surrounded by soldiers from Guard's unit of questionable loyalty. In Lagos, designated forces hurried towards their target at Hesh Hour. Officers and soldiers from the 123 Battalion, 245 Riz Battalion, 201 Armored Headquarters Battalion, the 6th Battalion at Boni Camp and the 93rd Battalion at Ojo Cantonment were assigned to occupy critical areas or be completely mobilized on standby. The 123rd Battalion led by Major J. Madaki was instrumental in guarding the toll gates. The Lagos State Police Command Headquarters in Ikeja and the International Airport as well as other critical traffic intersections on the mainland. Despite the fact that most news coverage and commentators continued to portray the August school as bloodless, it was not. The battalion sent to the Lagos State Police Command Headquarters on Odudua Street in the Keja GRUA opened fire on a gathering of police officers without provocation, killing an unknown number. The 6th Battalion was taxed with soft operations and standby on Lagos Island including defending the eastern approaches to Victoria Island from Ekpe under the command of Lieutenant Colonel Joshua Madaki. 
Similar observation stations were set up by the 93rd Battalion at Ojo, along the Badagri Road and in the port area. Armored vehicles and stormtroopers from units commanded by Major Kobe and Bulus were detailed to primarily move to the FRUCN station Ikoi and State House Dodan Barracks, while also providing in-depth secondary support to infantry units deployed to the Antony, Oshodi and Ikeja areas. Four young majors were assigned to arrest the head of state at Dodon Barracks. They were Major Umar Dangiwa, Major Lawan Gwadabe, Major Abdul Mumunin Aminu, and Major Sambo Dasuki. They were able to accomplish this without any difficulty. He accompanied his captors to Bonnie Camp, from where he was eventually taken to No. 1 Hawksworth Road, Ikoi, under house arrest. He was there for less than a week before being moved again, probably to a house in Benin City. Meanwhile, the official premises of the head of state at State House Dodan Barracks was ransacked and Buari's belongings looted by soldiers. Could this have accounted for why he claimed that his certificates are with the military? Please leave a comment below. Assisted by an unopposed entry into the radio station contrived by the guards garrison commander, Colonel Joshua Dogoyaro Starks was to make the crucial radio broadcast at 600 hours, bringing the regime of Major General Muhammad Buhari to an end. As daybreak progressed, coup coordinators at Bonnie Camp established radio communication with all divisions and brigades in the country to obtain situation reports and pledges of loyalty in their areas of responsibility. General Ibrahim Babangida was then contacted in Mina to return to Lagos to take charge. An arrangement were concluded for a plane to go and fetch him. At this point, bottles of champagne were opened to celebrate the coup. A key meeting of key plotters took place at the camp, after which there was further radio broadcast to the nation by Brigadier Sani Abacha at 1300 hours, formally appointing Major General Ibrahim Babangida, erstwhile Chief of Army Staff, as a new Commander-in-Chief. Shortly after Hesh Hour in Jaws, the commanding officer of the 3rd Armored Division, then Brigadier Salihu Ibrahim, was arrested at home by a team of soldiers led by Lieutenant Colonel Chris Abutu Garuba, who was the commander, 34th Self Propelled Artillery Brigade in Jaws. The commanding officer of Riz Battalion at the Rukuba Cantonment, Major Adesina, was arrested in the residence of his second in command, Major Musa Shehu. With these two key arrests, the 3rd Armored Division fell into the hands of pro-coup officers and no further resistance was anticipated. While the operations in Kaduna, base of the 1st Infantry Division were straightforward, all the key brigades were in the hands of officers sympathetic to the coup or neutral to it. Both Inugu and Ibadan were quiet and under control. For the basic reasons why the head of state, General Muhammad Ubuari, was overthrown by Ibrahim Babangida in the Palace coup of August 27, 1985, please watch this video here next. If you have any value or have been entertained by this video, please smash the like button. Don't forget to subscribe and enable notification so you don't miss our future uploads. Thank you very much for watching. Peace to Nigeria and to you. See you in the next video.